Now, what about hyperbolas that are not perfectly centered at the origin? If the center of this hyperbola is going to be at h comma k, then all the formulae just have x replaced by x minus h and k replaced and y replaced by y minus k. And everything else is the same. Notice that the x always hugs, hangs out with the h, the y always hangs out with the k, even when in fact we switch and the y comes first, the y is still with the k, the x is still with the h. The bottom line is h is an x value, k is a y value, and so they always hang together. And then everything else sort of follows suit. The asymptotes, everything gets shifted around. So this looks really scary too, but if you think about it, this is just the line we saw before, but now we have to make sure it passes through the point that's the center, which is hk. So I just shifted it over. So everything just gets shifted over. So it looks complicated, but I promise you it's really not if you think about what's going on here. Let's take a look at one example to see this for real. We want to sketch the graph of this. I want to talk through it first, and then we'll be a little bit more systematic. Here's my thinking. My thinking is I see something squared over 9 minus something squared over 25 equals 1. That minus sign clues me in right away with all those squares and that minus sign. This is going to be a hyperbola. So that tells me that I'm, I'm there. Where's the center? The center is actually going to be given to me by 1 and not 4. 4 is a great wrong answer. Remember, I have to write y minus. So to write this as y minus, I must have negative 4. So I see the center is at 1 comma negative 4. And I see that since the x comes first, then in fact I'm going to have my vertices along sort of parallel to the, to the x-axis. And they're going to be at a length of square root of 9, which is 3 away from the center. And now I'm getting the ball rolling. Let's now be a little bit more systematic. I just wanted you to hear my approach. So what are the vertices going to be? Well, the vertices are going to be the old vertices, which are plus or minus 3, comma 0. But plus, we have to now add on the shift that we made where the center is. Well, the center is at 1, comma, negative 4. So now when I add this to each of these terms, I see that my vertices now are going to be 3, 0, plus 1, a negative 4, which is going to be so 3 and 1 is 4, comma 0, and negative 4 is negative 4. And the other one is going to be negative 3, and 1 is going to be negative 2, comma negative 4. So I just took the old vertex that we knew, the old vertices that we knew, and I just shifted it, the appropriate amount. All right, what about the co-vertices? The exact same thing here. I take 0 plus or minus 5, that's the square root of the 25, and now I just shift it to the new center. And so what I see here is 1 comma 1 and 1 comma negative 9. And what are the asymptotes? Well, again, now in this case, since the x comes first, I see the slope of the asymptote is going to be plus or minus b over a. And so in this case, I see y minus the y value, which is going to be minus negative 4, which is going to be plus 4, equals the slope plus or minus b, which is going to be 5 square root of that, over a, square root of that, 3, times x minus the x value, which is 1. So there's the, there are the two asymptotes. These are the two co-vertices, and these are the vertices. Put it all together, what do you got? You get a hyperbola. So again, the graph just requires us to, to think a little teeny bit about this. I first want to put in that center point just to sort of keep my, my mind straight. That's at 1, negative 4. 1, negative 4 is right here. That's where all the, that's where all the asymptotes are going to pass through. Both asymptotes are going to pass through that. The next point that's really important are the vertices. So the vertices are going to happen at 4, negative 4. So 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a vertex. And negative 2, negative 4. So that means that since the x comes first, this is going to open up right and left. And this is going to be the, the furthest leftmost point of this wing. And this is going to be the furthest rightmost point of this wing. If I now put in the asymptotes, so if you graph these two lines, they pass through um, 4, negative 1, and have a slope of 5 thirds first. So 5 up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 3 over. Goes through that point and this point. Take out the straight edge. Connect the straight edge. 
a lot of work in this, right? No one said graphing hyperbolas are a piece of cake. That's because a hyperbola is not a piece of cake. It's a hyperbola. Now, we start at the same point, and now we look at negative 5 over 3. So that means drop 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Drop and give me 5. Then over 3. 1, 2, 3. Got this point. Connect these two. No longer uh, do we have these two lines being reflections of each other over the x-axis. They're actually reflections of each other along the line y equals negative 4. See? They flip off there. Now, our mission is to use our artistic skills to draw in one wing that wants to hug up to that asymptote, one wing that wants to hug to there, hug, hug, and there you have it. There is the graph of this particular hyperbola.